Well, thank you very much, Gina, for your wonderful introduction, and thank, uh, uh, thanks to the uh, organizing, organizing Committee for the invitation, and it's a great honor and a pleasure to be here. Uh, I, I must say that I may disappoint uh, you, Gina, that because uh, uh, when you progress through the day, much of the good stuff or the materials have been covered already. It's harder for the people that are coming to the end of the day say something new. Uh, but nevertheless, I will give a try, and uh, so uh, uh, maybe this will be a very short presentation. Uh, I did. Click this a big button. It's that should be it. Huh. And have a technical issue. Yeah, you're pushing the right button. So push it this way. Let me do the one more. You may time. have a low battery in the device. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Let me make one more. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, very good. Um, uh, I come from uh, uh, USDA National Institute of Food and Agriculture, and uh, uh, so um, it will be uh, remiss that uh, not to say a couple words about uh, my agency. And uh, most of the data that are presented here is actually uh, come out of agency support or research. So I am myself another bench top scientist. So any tough scientific question, you must refer to the people that I refer to. Uh, in this uh, in this talk, and, and so of course the focus of this presentation will focus on microplastics and nanoplastics in food and agriculture. And I, when I said that uh, many good materials are being presented, I indeed uh, mean so because uh, uh, you know, like a Gartha presentation, cover much of stuff uh, and the points that I want to make. Uh, so uh, USDA NIFA is uh, USDA's primary extramural science agency. And uh, our mission is to invest in and advance agricultural research education and extension to solve a societal challenge. So uh, the, uh, later on you will hear from my presentation that uh, agency not only support research but also education as well as outreach, we call the extension here. Uh, USDA NEFA's uh, annual budget is about 1.6 uh, billion dollars covers a wider spectrum uh, of the agriculture and food societal needs, uh, things such as uh, to ensure the food and the, uh, nutrition security, uh, to uh, um, promote the agricultural production technologies, uh, to address a variety of challenges, including climate uh, variability, water resources, uh, food safety is very important. And we put this microplastic and nanoplastic in the context of food safety. Uh, I think this is uh, the uh, relevant here, uh, and, the, and the nutrition is also. And then the USDA also support the research related to the bio-based product, including bioplastics. And then so uh, utilization of agricultural materials uh, and then to support the circular economy or bio-based economy. And then so if we make a plastic and polymers, uh, that will come back uh, and uh, uh, gets into this space of discussion. Uh, this is the um, private and public investment in the agriculture and the food space over the last uh, four or five decades. The lighter blue line indicates um, public investment. And then currently, it stands a little bit over $4 billion. As you can see, USDA NIFA is about 40% of that investment. So it's a pretty significant part of that. And secondly, I want to point out that uh, uh, shortly after 2000, private sector pick up their investment in agriculture and food research rather rapidly. Now it's uh, uh, more than twice as much as a public investment. So the point I make here is that when we're moving forward with a discussion here, uh, let's not forget a private or public partnership. We need to understand whether this issue, if it's important to the public investment, is that also important to private sector as well. We need to gauge that voice into that discussion when we talk about the strategy moving forward. So uh, NEFA has uh, more than 50 or so uh, budget lines in terms of our programs. Uh, uh, AFRI is our flagship agriculture and food research initiative. It's our flagship competitive grants program. It's about $300 million a year and covers a broader topic across entire 
uh, spectrum of food and agriculture. Uh, another competitive program, uh, uh, SCRI specialty crop uh, research uh, initiatives. Uh, I want to mention one example, a project that's supported by uh, SCAR in terms of uh, microplastics. Uh, we also have a capacity, capacity building grants such as HATCH um, programs, and then that really uh, appropriate funding to the, our land grant partners, land grant universities, uh, and then to have them make a local decision in terms of where they invest the most uh, strategically important the areas. There are a few examples I want to cite here that uh, are related using a formula fund, uh, uh, support a multi state research committee. So, um, much has been presented here. We understand that, that uh, the presence of the uh, microplastic and nanoplastics in the environment, in the agricultural production line, and the food and the water. So much examples, uh, and then the cases are being cited here. And uh, so no need to talk about much. Uh, we can perhaps understand that, that the sources of these uh, microplastic and nanoplastics are either coming from industry contamination, because a large industry, there are many, many ways that, uh, you know, to see that potential on, on uh, coming into the uh, the field of uh, of our interest, uh, uh, degradation of the plastics in nature is a very mu very much a talk, uh, and uh, so it seems that it is is really the focus of this uh, uh, this meeting up to this point. But I also want to point out that that they could have an intentional introduction of a polymeric material in the macro and the nano size because they carry certain functions of importance. Today I learned a word uh, from a European colleague as a primary uh, microplastics, yeah. So it has a similar notion, but uh, uh, see if we have uh, uh, aquatic foods, and the previous uh, uh, speaker talked a lot about aquatic foods, and also terrestrial food production were exposed to uh, the plastic. Uh, example that you have not heard of is that uh, agriculture mulching film, and I showed the example in the picture before. Uh, it's a broader use in the, in, the, in the agriculture production, and then being tilled, the eroded over the land, and then so it has exerted the degradation in the environment. And so uh, I want to show a project in that space. Uh, delivering functional materials in the food and the agricultural production. This is to talk about the using poly, polymer, polymeric macro um, particles, nanoparticles that deliver functional ingredients either in the food, such as uh, I think the FDA colleagues mentioned about the delivering of drugs, right? And uh, we deliver about uh, um, bioactives, for instance, uh, and the nutrients uh, of, uh, of challenges, a challenge to the environmental stress, challenge the processing condition, uh, of a challenge of the distribution in a food matrix, of a challenge in the bioavailability, bio-uptaking in the body, so uh, similar to the medical field, and then that's being explored in the uh, food uh, space and functional food. And also in the agriculture production and using polymer material to deliver agrochemicals. And then so it will control the release and the target release trigger, uh, biomarker trigger the release. Uh, some of these things minimize using input the agricultural resources in the field of production, yet at the same, same time maintain or, or increase the production, minimize the environmental uh, implication. So, uh, Dr. Evan Watt is a professor at the University of Connecticut, and the example you have seen in the previous presentation, and uh, uh, he is an expert in the uh, study of engineered nanoparticle implication to the um, aquatic uh, marine species in the, in the EHS space. He also uh, obtained a grant from uh, AFRI, I mentioned about our AFRI program, in the food safety program, and then to study the impact of the, uh, the micro and the nanoplastics uh, to the aquatic foods. And then please understand that the AFRI is a very competitive, competitive grant program, and the successful rate is about 10 to 15%. And he got this grant from the food safety program. And then think about the, the majority concern and the food safety concern these days are mostly in the um, pathogenic microorganism. And uh, so getting a grant from that crowd, uh, you can see that, uh, that uh, he's done a fantastic job of convincing uh, the, the focus in the food space, food safety space, uh, and to recognize this is an emerging issue and then vote for this project and support it. And he's done a fabulous job in this one. Um, 
one of the things that, uh, uh, as mentioned in the previous presentation, that, uh, uh, well, this uh, study is that the feeding mussels and oysters with a different uh, uh, the size and then the shape of uh, um, the uh, polystyrene um, beads uh, as well as nylon fibers. And uh, uh, as, uh, as appears that these, uh, uh, these animals have some intelligence, they selectively ingest uh, certain particles and then reject some of these. So uh, uh, I'm not totally clear as to what is the mechanism that, that choose uh, uh, certain particles to ingest as others to uh, to uh, to reject, and then of course ingestion will um, secrete out the system very quickly. But the point made here is that if we intended to use these uh, um, bivalves as an indicator of a contamination or presence of the microplastics and nanoplastics, we miss target because the selection process in it. So uh, we have to think about how to interpret and use that. And uh, uh, some of these results have been mentioned. Uh, the differences between microplastics and nanoplastics. Uh, ingestion of mi microplastic is more than nanoplastic by weight. All right, uh, this is important to recognition. It's by weight because so when people get into the small particle size and nanoparticle size, the number of sizes, number of particles may be uh, quite an important factor, and we don't have that information yet. Retention of nanoparticle is greater than uh, microplastics. And the ejection of microplastics and the nanoplastic is, uh, micro is more than nanoplastic, which means that uh, these two are, are consistent with each other. One of the things is a depuration, which is subject to these sea animals, to the water, and to see the secretion of these uh, um, particles. It suggests that uh, that both nano and the microplastic is rapid uh, removed out of the system. Hence, there will be very little accumulation. Hence, there will be less food safety concern. And based on this study, which is good news to us, right? Cleaning our system. But uh, I think a more systematic question is that how these nanoplastic and the microplastic behavior in different digestive, digestive tract. And that will be a very interesting uh, space. Uh, talk about uh, the agricultural um, mulch use. And uh, um, the, uh, um, Dr. Hayson, University of Tennessee, uh, launched a study in, and to develop a basic method to systematically produce uh, microplastic and nanoplastic of different the sizes. And uh, he uses the agricultural relevant polymer rather than pristine polymer material as model. And so this is relevant to the agriculture. He has a stage process. He used uh, um, cryogenic site reduction, which is a mimic weathering. We heard of the words of matter, ma weathering of uh, um, um, polymers in the, in, 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 the, in the field of nature. This is in the agriculture production field. And the second one is, uh, um, is milling. The agricultural mulch in the field is subject to the milling tilling uh, tillage um, process. So it's accelerated the breaking down of the particles. And finally, here is wet grinding, and which mimic the interaction of these uh, um, plastic species with uh, the with the soil, or minor stress with uh, um, the uh, um, earthworm. Uh, interactions and ingestions and that, and then produce the particle of a different size. Considering this is offers a methods for um, for the research and then to uh, to produce more reliable, relevant um, data um, to the question. Um, the uh, uh, microplastic and nanoplastic are prepared from agricultural plastic, as I mentioned, and then different uh, uh, three stages of processing generate the uh, um, particle size of the um, consistent, uh, the average of particle size. And uh, uh, one of the things that uh, um, he, he observed is that the size reduction procedures did not produce any artificial uh, artifacts in chemical structures. Uh, I thought that that's very interesting to mention uh, here. Uh, Microplastic and nanoplastics are useful for fundamental research in the agricultural soil. So the third example I, know, I want to show here is by Professor Kristina Sablyov, who is our, um, uh, really has done a lot of work in the nanotechnology space. Um, he's, he takes a balanced approach 
and then to look at the both the application side and the efficacy of application, as well as the safety side, the implication side of that. And uh, he used uh, PLGA and a polymeric based the dendroma uh, structure for delivery in the functional um, uh, ingredients. This is both for food applications as well as for deliver agrochemicals. And in the safety side, and he done the, um, uh, she has done the, the cell structure, uh, 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 cell-based analysis, and the animal-based, uh, and then found that the biodistribution uptake of this polymer and then being different part of the organ, and, uh, and look at uh, the, uh, the tissue structures to see if there's any adverse effect, uh, see the cleaning out of the system and distribution the different part of the body. And I think uh, the bottom line is that uh, with uh, PLGA polymer and uh, uh, generally speaking, it has a less adverse effect. It's, uh, it's, it's more encouraging in terms of safe use of that. And so uh, I thought to mention this here. Uh, Mention about that we have uh, uh, other dimensions for work uh, supported by um, Hatch Project, uh, a multi-state committee. This uh, committee, and uh, let me just explain that this, uh, the initial is uh, the, uh, the first one is uh, the committee code, and then the, the second part is the, uh, the committee's uh, uh, overarching theme area, and the third is the example pick up out from that project that has a relevance uh, to the microplastics. And these are the multi-state research committee, even 10 or 20 states, uh, scientists that participate in this committee, and they do have an annual meeting. And this is a typically multidiscipline um, committee, and then they are uh, looking for the, uh, for the synergies and uh, supporting each other in advance uh, in the science in this area. And as you can see from the list, they involve wastewater and water and bio-based products and the agrochemicals and the soil conditions and, uh, um, and the environmental public and the ecosystem health. The project that fi um, founded here is, uh, for instance, the first one, uh, to look at the microplastic beads, uh, imagine as the contamination in the environment, uh, and then uh, combine with the pharmaceutical products in the environment, uh, see if there's any bioaccumulation uh, in the environment. Uh, the second one, as I mentioned, Dr. Hayes is a part of that, and look at the methods of development. They look at the small angle neutron scattering methodology to distinguish nanoparticles and nanoplastics in that. Uh, risk assessment uh, and uh, uh, to look at the broke down, broke down agro agrochemicals uh, to human food and environment and uh, um, uh, develop methods of extracting, quantify, and characterize supplies in, in soils. And, uh, um, and uh, so, yeah, so a number of these. Uh, the, the public engagement and education is a very important aspect uh, it would, with, with, with issues of this size. Uh, and we have a number of projects that support educational efforts involve uh, undergraduate research and graduate training in the methods, and uh, even one that involves building a citizen science monitoring group uh, to look at monitoring the, the prevalence of microplastics in the environment and a variety of activities. So. Um, again, and food safety is very important. Uh, um, we view as a, a very important grand challenge. Uh, should a microplastic and nanoplastic pose a food safety issue? Uh, we want to um, take a close look at this uh, and a variety of challenges. Uh, uh, I think a key thing in this space is that we need to understand the relevancy of the issues to be discussed to the food safety issue, right? Yeah, so. Um, I don't want to read a list of uh, uh, a number of issues and they're more similar to uh, many of the pre previous uh, presentation. And so uh, with that, and I think I should uh, stop here and then give a time back to Gina.